The Carthage Bulldogs defeated the Solana Bobcats to win the 2008 UIL Football State Championship. This would be their first state title win in the beginning of something legendary. The biggest success would probably be 2008 because that's what got us going. And we've never done it before. I've done it as assistant, but the community's never done it. They have a baseball, but never won a championship in football. And uh, see that sea of red at the, the old Cowboy Stadium or Texas Stadium. And it was something special. And uh, you know, I can still remember coming out of the tunnel today. Deep in the Piney Woods of East Texas, Carthage is home to the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame, and more notably, the Carthage Bulldogs. With a population of less than 7,000, it is the epitome of small town USA. Carthage is a, like you said, small town of about 6,000, 7,000 people. Uh, one of those places where <laughs> if anything happens, good or bad, it gets spread all across town within two seconds and everyone knows. You know, in a small town, you have kind of an, an intimacy with your community. Uh, you know, learning to drive, learning, you know, whenever just you carry on your daily business, you're kind of, you know, like when you go to the bank, you might be speaking to your grandmother's classmate from school or somebody you go to the church with. And, um, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I moved back, glad to be here. You know, nothing is perfect, no place is perfect, but I would say, you know, Carthage is, is a good town to grow up in, you know, for a kid, you know, or if you're retired, want to come back home, it's definitely a good place to be as far as like being like, as far as peaceful and, you know, just settling and just, you know, like I said, being in a family oriented atmosphere. Well, we played Carthage when I was at um, Texas High, 2000, 2001, and saw some really good athletes. Um, even though we, we beat them pretty good both years, but uh, I thought it was a, maybe um, not playing so hard or whatever. I think it's correctable things, but also growing up, up an hour from here, I saw how much talent they had when I was in high school. And, and uh, so I thought this was a good place to be. Under Scott Surratt, that's probably one of the most intelligent humans on the football field that I've ever been around. Uh, he can dissect things on the fly. Previous head coaches each had their strengths, each had their weaknesses, but uh, probably he, to me his, his strength would be the way he dissects during the game. In the 13 years before Coach Surratt, we won five playoff games and lost seven. So we made the playoffs in seven out of the 13 years and you know that's, that's, a, that's a very good program. The expectations have just changed dramatically. I can tell you that before he came, uh, the talk before the season was, okay, you think we're gonna make the playoffs this year? Remember, we made it seven out of the 13 years before he came. But since then, uh, the talk eventually, after we won about two or three championships, the talk has become, are we gonna win the state this year? Level of expectation uh, for the fans and the broadcasters <laughs> is much higher. He set a new standard for the, the uh, athletes coming in and uh, he's developed over the years uh, just a phenomenal, uh, uh, you know, a really just unbelievable record that he's got. And you've already taken the picture of seven state championships, I think, and we're on the road to another one. First thing we wanted to do is win the district championship. You know, we hadn't won one here in 15 years, an outright district championship in 15 years. and. And uh, people, they asked me on my, my interview if I thought we could win the state championship. I said, I think you, you got to own your district and win your district in, uh, to, before you start talking state championship. So we never talked about a state championship until after the second year we was here. Luckily, we, we won it then, and then that's the bar for the state championship. But uh, you know, we should, that's all we talk about now. Well, you know, um, definitely it's a different generation, you know, the kids are a little different mentally than they were, you know, I would say, you know, a decade ago. It's still intense, like I said, Coach Surratt was very intense when he first got here, but I feel like it's not as aggressive, you know, as it was when, when we were playing. And uh, it's not knocking the kids now, but it's just, you know, like I said, a different generation, you know. You can't coach every kid, you know, the same. You got to be able to adjust. And I feel like that's what you have to understand as a coach, you know. Every kid isn't going to be a, the same. They're going to react to um, things differently. Um, but 
at the end of the day, you know, the, the mindset is to win and, you know, whatever it takes to win, that's, that's what our staff is, you know, gonna, gonna push. If there was a specific play though, it, it's certainly when Deshaun Williams uh, made that stop at the very end. I mean, he's thrown it, one in the end zone and he, the kid missed it in the first half. Why do you have a kid that has not run the, that play all night come in? Did you just good for us? Yeah, I, I don't. Merry Christmas to us. Yeah, Merry Christmas. I mean that was, uh, I mean that was that was fantastic. It was a it was a it was a game changing moment. It was, it was certainly, certainly pivotal. A couple of plays I remember is of course uh, we ran a throwback to the quarterback to myself and um, that set us up to be in a good position to go, obviously go ahead and score and you know set fit us up in a position to where we were comfortable at that point in the game. And what do you think is your biggest failure and biggest success? Failure would probably be 2012 would get beaten in the semifinals. And, uh, you know, we definitely should have won probably 28 point favorites in El Campo, and, um, and we, we fumbled four times. So I think that's the biggest failure for it is football. El Campo football. El Campo is going to win it. 29-25. Well, I, I can't believe it. The Bulldogs clinched their seventh state championship in 2019, but it didn't come without adversity. Coach Dennis McLaughlin, the Bulldogs' offensive coordinator, passed away during the season after a hard-fought battle with cancer. Him as a person, I loved Coach Mac. Uh, you, you weren't, Coach Mac is Coach Mac, and you were going to get, you know, the same person every time you came across him, whether it was the first day you met him or 10 years, 20 years later, you know. He was a, what I call a very real and authentic person, you know. He, um, he wasn't going to sugarcoat anything. He, um, he was going to give you the best advice he could give you, you know. And um, as far as a coach, he, um, it, was, it, was definitely out, it was definitely hard to outwork him. I met Coach Mack, actually. Um, I played for Coach Mack. He was um, coaching at Lennon Kilder when I came to, It was his first coaching job. And I was a junior at Lennon Kilder, and he was our head basketball coach, but he also coached us in football. And, he, um, you know, I don't guess he liked Linda Kildare too much. He was there one year, then he came to Carthage, and, and he was a freshman coach. And, but he made he's, he made such a difference in my life in that one year, just one year he touched me. And uh, so I moved him up to receivers coach immediately, and, and I, then you know I moved him up to offensive coordinator. But Coach Mack, man, there's only one Coach Mack. He's so positive. Never been around so somebody that as positive as he was. And, you can always tell that with the kids how much they loved him and how great a teacher he was in, in the classroom and taught the history and he was just a great man. Since winning the first state title, the program has lost three young Bulldog alumni too soon. Portland Ware, Austin Gray, and Chris Dickerson. Each of these young men led the Bulldogs to at least one championship win. Their losses have deeply affected this small town community and they will always be remembered for making history. From my hometown, my Beyond the trophy, what keeps you here? Uh, the next trophy, the next ring. We continue for the next ring because our favorite ring is always going to be the next ring. When the air is so thick and opaque, I love her to see everybody in short skirts, shorts, and shades. I like it in the city when two Different sides. 
shows that we ain't gonna stand shows that we are united shows that we ain't gonna take it shows that we ain't gonna stand shows that we are united run my 